a lot of you know that A Course in Miracles is, is a, we could say, a non-dualistic pathway. It's a pathway that points to and leads us to an experience of absolute oneness, of absolute connectedness, and an awareness that love is all there, there is. It's one step beyond the Beatles, all you need is love, <laughs> to all there is is love. Uh, it's not even a need, but while we're going through the forgiveness process, we're coming in the direction of, we're returning to love. Yet, this state of mind, right-mindedness, that Jesus uses, he juxtaposes it in the Course with wrong-mindedness, saying that, that in reality, there's only love, but while you believe in separation from that love, then I'm going to have to give you a pathway back that teaches you the discernment between being in a, in a tune with spirit or aligned with spirit and being out of a line. And what wrong mind is, wrong mindedness is in the, in the most simple way is the belief in an external cause, in a cause in the world. And that's the thought system that we've all been raised with. That's what the definition of coming to earth is about, to believe that there's something outside of you that can hurt, hurt you, or that can help you, that can, something outside of yourself that can heal you, or that can make you ill, that can give you life, or can take life away, that can, can kill you. It, this whole realm of time and space is the belief that there's something outside. And so basically, when we come back and talk about living, from right-mindedness, we're coming back to that experience that the mind is, is causative. And I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. I could be helped by nothing <laughs> but my thoughts. These thoughts are very, very important. So it's very, very important that we get in touch with our thoughts. If, if thoughts are unconscious, if thoughts are judged against and pushed down into the unconscious mind, and you might say, it seems to be our life in this world is more like a robotic acting out of unconscious thoughts and beliefs. So it's absolutely important, imperative actually, for us to become fully conscious of our thoughts. And the reason that thoughts are pushed out of awareness is because Oftentimes they've been judged against and they're too terrible, they're too, they're just too horrible to be held in awareness. So you might say that there's a fear in the mind of the power of these thoughts. And why is it that we would be so afraid of thoughts except that there's a belief in our mind that we could miscreate with our thoughts, that we could go against our source, go against our Creator with these thoughts. That's where the, the terror comes in, that's where the fear comes in. And that's why all of the discipline and the mind training that I talk about is, is coming back to become fully aware and to come into the actual experience that our Source, our Creator, God, never gave us the power to destroy. Never created us with the power to miscreate. It's only this ego belief that brings up this idea of miscreation. God is Spirit and God creates in Spirit. And the Spirit is pure love. So love comes from love. Love extends love. Even in this world we get apples from apple trees, we get pears from pear trees, peaches from peach trees. And you might say if we take that back to the realm of spirit, spirit comes from spirit. So the Word of God, I finally got to the point in the Course where uh, in the workbook Jesus was talking about the Word of God with a capital W, so I'm kind of interested. In, okay, fine, tell me what is this Word of God? The Word of God is, I am as God created me. The Word comes directly from God. It's, it's our spirit, it's our essence, it's our identity. And Jesus even addresses some things that we've grown up with uh, 
Because the Bible says the Word was made flesh. And Jesus, in the Course, in this text, addresses this and he says, strictly speaking, this is impossible. The Word, I am as God created me, is, is Spirit. So strictly speaking, he's saying, you can't translate something that's eternal into flesh. And some of you also might remember in the Bible it says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. There was a beautiful uh, monk that lived back in the 12th century named St. Francis. And St. Francis loved the Bible and he loved reading that part. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. And then he followed it up with, I now am born again. But the Course in Miracles we're starting to realize that this saving, this salvation is more than speaking a few words. Wouldn't that be nice? It's, that's almost as easy as Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, click your heels together three times. There's no place like home, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, and you're back. We're finding that it's more than professing of Jesus Christ as Savior. In fact, Jesus, he doesn't shy away from words. I liked reading in A Course in Miracles that he said, only, uh, only your mind requires sal salvaging. So only your mind requires salvation. He's saying only the mind requires salvaging and it's only salvaged through peace. Which makes it really simple. Thank you.